your face is not so familiar anymore. The friends you knew and the time have passed you by. I close my eyes, hold out my hands. I pretend that I can't fly. Over the trees and through the clouds I can see your eyes I can do all things through you who strengthens me A simple phrase, so why must I run away? Stop right here Everything's so loud and clear I can hear you now I want to touch the sky so red I want to feel the ocean blue I want you to bring me back Bring me back to you Hold out my hands I pretend that I can fly Over the trees and through the clouds I can see your eyes I want to touch the sky so red I want to feel the ocean blue I want you to breathe I'm Roger, and I'm glad that you're here today. We're going to worship together shortly, but before we do, let me share some announcements with you. Tomorrow night on October 31st, we will have our annual trunk or treat from 5.30 to 7 in the parking lot of the church. We need your help to make this fun event happen. We still need people to volunteer to decorate their trunk and hand out candy that evening. You can call the church office to let us know that you're willing. Second, we will gladly accept any last-minute candy. Bring in the good stuff and drop it off in the bin in the hallway outside the church office. We are expecting a big crowds this year, so help us out by bringing in big bags. We are looking forward to having the community in our parking lot, and we would love for you to be a part of it. If you are decorating a trunk, we appreciate it if you would be here to set up at 5 o'clock. Make plans to join us on Wednesday evening, November 2nd at 6 p.m. for our Fall Church Conference. This will be the conference where we will present and discuss the 2023 church budget. So it is important that you are here. 
We all need to be involved so that we can impact our community with the gospel. Ladies, we would love for you to attend the next women's event on Saturday, November 12th from 10 a.m. till noon. Join us as we make orange clove pomanders and we learn about Advent. We will have Advent resources to help you grow during this exciting season. This is a free event and there will be giveaways as well. Come be a part of this fun morning. You can sign up now in the Church Center app or on the sign up sheet in the lobby. Don't forget our church's weekly podcast. Each week on the PATH podcast, pastors Derek and Jason recap the sermon from Sunday and take the opportunity to dig a little deeper on certain topics. In the month of October, every episode will focus on an opportunity to be involved in missions, and there will be interviews with missionaries. It is available wherever you listen to podcasts, and you can also watch a video version each Thursday on Lafayette First YouTube page. Finally, remember that next Saturday night, Daylight Savings Time will end, and we get to fall back. So before you go to bed, set your clocks back one hour and enjoy a little extra time to rest. Although, if you forget, we will be happy to have you here an hour early next Sunday. We would love to see you be a part of all these upcoming events. Remember how vital community is for our growth in Christ. We're so glad that you're here today. Take a moment to pray and get ready to meet with God as we worship together. now make me stronger I know there's so much that's in store your mercy's raining down and I stand amazed you call my name and I'm lost in your gaze mercy's raining down and everywhere I see you are a God who cares for me you are a God who cares for me Touch. 
watching me Always touching me Hey everyone, I'm Roger and I'm glad that you're here today. We're going to worship together shortly, but before we do, let me share some announcements with you. Tomorrow night on October 31st, we will have our annual trunk or treat from 5.30 to 7 in the parking lot of the church. We need your help to make this fun event happen. We still need people to volunteer to decorate their trunk and hand out candy that evening. You can call the church office to let us know that you're willing. Second, we will gladly accept any last minute candy. Bring in the good stuff and drop it off in the bin in the hallway outside the church office. We are expecting a big crowds this year, so help us out by bringing in big bags. We are looking forward to having the community in our parking lot, and we would love for you to be a part of it. If you are decorating a trunk, we appreciate it if you would be here to set up at five o'clock. Make plans to join us on Wednesday evening, November 2nd at 6 p.m. for our Fall Church Conference. This will be the conference where we will present and discuss the 2023 church budget. So it is important that you are here. We all need to be involved so that we can impact our community with the gospel. Ladies, we would love for you to attend the next women's event on Saturday, November 12th from 10 a.m. till noon. Join us as we make orange clove pomanders and we learn about Advent. We will have Advent resources to help you grow during this exciting season. This is a free event and there will be giveaways as well. Come be a part of this fun morning. You can sign up now in the Church Center app or on the sign up sheet in the lobby. Don't forget our church's weekly podcast. Each week on the PATH podcast, pastors Derek and Jason recap the sermon from Sunday and take the opportunity to dig a little deeper on certain topics. In the month of October, every episode will focus on an opportunity to be involved in missions, and there will be interviews with missionaries. It is available wherever you listen to podcasts, and you can also watch a video version each Thursday on Lafayette First YouTube page. Finally, remember that next Saturday night, Daylight Savings Time will end, and we get to fall back. So before you go to bed, set your clocks back one hour and enjoy a little extra time to rest. Although, if you forget, we will be happy to have you here an hour early next Sunday. We would love to see you be a part of all these upcoming events. Remember how vital community is for our growth in Christ. We're so glad that you're here today. Take a moment to pray and get ready to meet with God as we worship together. Touching me I'm glad that you came ready to worship. Let's do that together. Let's sing these words together. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me precious 
Jesus the King 
God is good. You guys can be seated for a moment. But as you do, we're going to continue to worship this morning. As you can tell, there's some different furniture in our sanctuary this morning than usual. Uh, and our handbell choir is on their way. They're going to lead us in worship this morning. So let's welcome them. about this is there are a lot there's lots of dissonance which is notes that sound like they're not right and it's, it's a it's a different arrangement it's a different arrangement of holy 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 and I promise you some of us feel like we aren't playing the right notes but they're really the right notes um, I wanted to give you just a little history of holy 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 it was written by an Anglican Bishop Reginald Heber in 1861, and he drew inspiration for this from Revelation 4. If you get a chance, go read Revelation 4, and it talks about the living beings around the throne saying, Holy, 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 the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So please worship with us through Holy, Holy, Holy.
much, ladies. Y'all did an awesome job. Would you give them one more hand? I love that hymn, and I love that arrangement. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for being here. We're excited that you're here with us. If you're a guest of ours today, thank you especially. We're so thankful that God brought you to be with us, and we want to help you take that next step on your journey in your walk with the Lord. And so we want to help connect you into uh, the life of the church and also uh, into life with Christ. And so right in front of you, there's a connect card. and We'd love for you to fill that out, and we will uh, follow up with you and help you get connected. I also have a gift for you. I'd love to give to you out in the lobby right afterwards. You come see me, hand me that card. We'll give you uh, a great gift. You can also text to get the word guest to 423-455-9458. does the exact same thing, so whichever you prefer. So we're excited today to continue to worship the Lord. We're going to close out Revelation 11 in just a few moments, and we're going to worship. We're going to uh, echo some of those similar tones and, 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 and verses of uh, of Revelation 4, just kind of a callback to that. We're going to worship the Lord and learn about worshiping Him, and so I'm so thankful that you're here. A couple of things real quick I want to draw your attention to, and, uh, and then I want to ask you to watch a video in just a moment. Number one, we still have t-shirts for sale. We began selling those last week. They'll be for sale in the lobby right afterwards. They're just uh, a t-shirt that says, uh, Lafayette First is a place to call home, and we'd love for you to uh, grab one of those and help uh, represent our church into the community. Those are $15, and so we invite you to, to do that. Uh, also, we are doing an, initi an initiative this uh, Christmas, and we're going to start it now because we're close to Veterans Day, and that is uh, we're doing wreaths over Chattanooga. And so what, what that is is that we are partnering and connecting with um, the group that puts wreaths on the uh, cemetery, the National Cemetery gravestones. And so we want to honor our veterans. We're going to have Veterans Day in just a few weeks. And so that's a way we can get involved. Those are $10 uh, for each wreath. And then we're also going to give you the information once we are aware of it, of how we can be a part of even putting those out. So we're going to collect those as a church. And so we invite you to do that. We're going to try to get 500 wreaths from our church. All right. So we encourage you uh, to search your heart and see what God might have you do. If you have any questions or you'd like to participate, ask Chip Reed. He's going to lead that, and we're so thankful he's doing that. We're thankful for this opportunity to show uh, veterans and those who have um, given their life um, for our country uh, that we love and appreciate their sacrifice. And so um, do that. We invite you to do that. You can write a check to the church, and we'll give that on behalf of of each and every one of us. Now, Missions Month, is, this is the final week of Missions Month, and what we've done is we have tried to emphasize what we're doing as a church and the ministries that we're partnering with, and everything that you give this month specified for missions goes to four buckets. Uh, international missions, which we'll learn about in just a moment, North American missions, which we talked about last week, and then Georgia missions through our Georgia Baptist Missions Board. And then what we are doing locally here as a church in Walker County and Lafayette. Today we're going to look at the International Mission Board and how we're partnering with them and uh, what they are doing. And so everything that you give this month towards missions goes to all four of those things at once. Will you turn your attention to the screen and learn how we are partnering all across the world through the Southern Baptist Convention and International Mission Board? Hi, my name is Phil, and along with my wife Becca and our two boys, we are your missionaries serving in Vienna, Austria. Because of your generous giving, we are able to share the light of Christ to the nearly two million people who don't know the good news. So thank you for giving to the cooperative program and to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering so that our family can live here, gather locals, to study God's Word and plant new churches. We are Jason and Robin Ebeyer, your IMB missionaries to a part of Thailand called Isong, where we serve as a part of a growing church planning team, along with several other missionaries. 
We are currently in language study and building friendships with the purpose of sharing the good news of Jesus with the people of East Sun. Because of your giving, we had the opportunity this December to share the meaning of Christmas. We did that in Christmas celebrations in different villages and communities all around us. During those celebrations, the love of Christ was shared, the gospel was shared, and relationships were strengthened. Please pray with us for the seven new believers who accepted Christ during these Christmas celebrations. Thank you for giving to the cooperative program and the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. It is truly making a difference in people's lives, both here and in eternity. such incredible things that we get to be a part of uh, through the cooperative program of the Southern Baptist Convention. And so we would encourage you uh, as we finish up Missions Month here this morning, maybe God is moving you to give above and beyond what you normally give to help this mission work and others like this that we see all around the globe. Well, let's continue to worship through song this morning. Let's stand to our feet and we continue to cry out to our Lord. Let's sing together. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains and your justice flows like the ocean's tide let's lift our voices i will lift my voice to worship you my king and i will find my continue to worship with us this morning as we think about the fact that God's will for us is done perfectly every day. Let's worship together.
I'm so confused I know I heard you loud and clear so I followed through and somehow I ended up here I don't want to think I may never understand then my broken heart is a part of your plan when I try to pray all I got is hurt and these four words Thy will be done Thy will be done Thy will be done I know you're good by the noise just trying to make sense of all your promises sometimes i gotta stop remember that you're god and i
We're going to close out uh, Revelation chapter 11 today, kind of at that halfway mark, and then we take a fast track toward the end of the year with Thanksgiving uh, series and thanks about Thanksgiving and a gratefulness, and then a series about Advent and the Nativity, and and then it'll be 2023, y'all. So it'll be quick. I, I, I sympathize with your groans. All right. But what we've been looking at is we've been looking at the various trumpets, the trumpet judgments, which which are really like warnings. And the warning below of every trumpet has been uh, given to the inhabitants of the earth that Jesus' kingdom is coming. And because it is coming, it is clashing with the kingdom that was here, that is here, the kingdom of this world. And those clashes made grand and terrifying scenes. And we've been talking about those and looking at those. We've been in a little bit of an interlude, but now we are here with the seventh trumpet sound. And the seventh trumpet's blow initiates a loud response mirroring or combating or contrasting with all those others. And it is the grand sounds and the loud noises of the inhabitants of the kingdom of God. It's no longer peals of thunder and, and war raging, and it is no longer uh, the, the effects of the warning signals, the, the, uh, the tornado sirens, if you will, of God's judgment. Now the loud sound that John hears is the loud sound of the people of God lifting their voices to worship Him, to honor Him, to glorify Him. The warnings have turned into worship. And I wonder if we might be able to say the same thing that our choir just so wonderfully sang about, that no matter what comes, no matter the things we face, Thy will be done, O God. Your hand and your will be accomplished. We must remember that God is who He says He is, and He will do what He says He will do. And part of that is avenging those who have suffered, and it's also bringing glory back to His kingdom by conquering, by conquering all and by conquering evil you see god has tarried in his judgment but ultimately he will conquer and he will overcome friends we've been studying this series and in parallel we've been studying spiritual warfare on wednesday nights and it's fascinating because I, it's, I'm not smart enough to plan this. I'm just trying to listen to what God says to do. And as we've been studying each, the same kind of themes arise. That there is a kingdom in whom its leader wants to crush and destroy you and me. And Jesus is coming, not to take sides, but Jesus is coming to take over and overcome and overwhelm that kingdom that wants to clash with us and come against us and seeks to kill and steal and destroy that roaring lion that seeks who he may devour. He's trying to devour you and I. But this beautiful book of Revelation reveals to us that the devil is no match for King Jesus. Amen? The devil is no match for King Jesus, and Jesus is coming, and he does not come to, uh, to make things, uh, uh, you know, fluff things over and make them okay. He comes to ultimately 
conquer evil. And because of that, he is worthy of our worship. You and I have the opportunity to join in the roar of heaven every time we worship him here. Every time we worship him in this room, every time we are on our own worshiping the Lord, in our prayers at home, and in our trusting God in the midst of the lament of our life that this world gives us and throws at us, even when it's something it seems like we cannot bear, when we worship God and say, Thy will be done, we join in the roar of heaven, exclaiming that we have a king who is better than anything this world can offer, and he deserves our praise. Would you look at me, look with me at the, first, the rest of Revelation chapter 11? And we're going to see here the type of worship that comes when we realize these truths. If you're able, would you stand for honor, for honoring the word of the Lord? We're going to begin in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Read along with me. The seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ. And he will reign forever and ever. The 24 elders who were seated before God on their thrones fell face down and worshiped God, saying, We give you thanks, Lord God, the Almighty, who is and was, because you've taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry, but your wrath has come. The time has come for the dead to be judged and to give reward to your servants, the prophets, to the saints and to those who fear your name, both small and great. And the time has come to destroy those who destroy the earth. And the temple of God in heaven was opened, and the ark of this covenant appeared in the temple. There were flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder, an earthquake and severe hell. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. And let's look at the type of worship that you and I can have because we worship a God who is worthy. The first thing we see is that we worship the God who overcomes. The worshipers in this passage indicate that King Jesus now takes this world to. The kingdom of this world is his, uh, in uh, the kingdom of this world is his in this passage. He rules and reigns here now too. In this picture we've seen all along the coming kingdom of Jesus Christ is always here and when he be, uh, when we'll celebrate the advent soon when Jesus came to establish his kingdom he said repent for the kingdom of God is at hand and that's because it was coming it began coming at that moment and it's like this thing that was embedded at the bottom of the earth and at the bottom of this other kingdom and it started to break through and when those kingdoms clashed and when that kingdom broke out of that cocoon the world went into turmoil and craziness And we've seen that all along. We've talked about that all along, that that Jesus is the coming one. Well, here in this passage, he is being worshipped because he has come and he has conquered and he rules and he reigns. It's been here all along, something veiled. Now it's been been coming into the light and the crust of the kingdom that is... Uh, tried to build itself up around it as a mockery of Jesus' kingdom falls away. Now King Jesus has fully taken over. And because he is overcomer, the worshipers in heaven, in this heaven scene, are loudly praising him. You see, Jesus is not merely someone or something that we just add to our lives. Jesus is king, ruling and reigning, and he overcomes. He overcomes whatever we face. Today, can I tell you that Jesus is an overcomer on your behalf? 
Jesus overcomes in your life, in the life of those who worship him. You see, these people in heaven could worship him because they knew what it was like to, to, to writhe in pain, to have difficulty in their life, to even face death because of their obedience and love and, uh, and because of their devotion to this king. Because it says that the prophets of old and the ones who believe in him and the ones who uh, even have fallen, we see in this heaven scene, they knew what Jesus had overcome for them. They knew what Jesus had overcome on their behalf. He overcomes sin. He overcomes the sting of pain. He overcomes hurts and wrongs done to us. He overcomes the world's hold on us. Yes, you may be in a situation where it seems as if you are down for the count, but Jesus is there standing right next to you, ready to lift you up and hide you behind himself and say to your situation, it may seem as though you have, con as though have you been, you have been conquered. It may seem like the world is winning at this moment, but I will overcome. I rule and reign over all things. Friends, we worship a God who overcomes. We have hope. We have hope that this momentary light affliction will one day result in glory. That the the identification of ourselves with the sufferings and the pain that Jesus even endured himself will one day end and we will be in his presence and he will rule and reign and those things will be no more. We worship a God who overcomes. The second thing we see is that we worship the reigning king. What the disciples thought Jesus would do in their day was to establish his kingdom on earth and in their time. And he now will do once and for all what they assumed. In this moment, he will finally rule and reign. And he will be king. And he exerts kingly power. It says... It says that the, uh, in this passage, verse 15 and following, the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. The 24 elders who were seated before God on their thrones fell face down and worshiped God, saying, we give thanks, Lord God, the Almighty, who is and was, because you've taken your great power and you have begun to reign. It says the nations were angry, but your wrath has come. You see, this world, this word here for power is this this word for reign is to exert kingly power. It's hard for us to understand because we live in, in a time of democracy and it, it, it still is a democracy. Sometimes it doesn't seem like others believe that, right? There we understand that. But we don't live in a monarchy where someone, one person can just say, this is how it's going to be, and you have to deal with it. But that is what Jesus will one day exert, his kingly power, and say, I am the Lord God, and this is who I am, and I will rule, and I will reign. When God said that vengeance is mine, says the Lord, this is the moment he meant. Once and for all, he rules over all wickedness. So if we worship him for his rule and reign, we must acknowledge our own hearts need to be ruled by him also. See, this is where the rubber meets the road because we can say all day long, Lord, we worship you. We want you to rule and reign. But there is an inkling in each and every one of us that says, I want to live my life my way. I'll put a little Jesus on it, 
But I want to rule it like Derek wants it to be ruled. I want to run it like Derek wants to be run, uh, wants his life to be run. The, the fact of the matter is, friends, that Jesus came to rule and reign in our hearts, in our lives, as the king of our lives. And if we're honest, we've messed it up so many times, we realize we are poor kings and queens. We are poor gods, and so we need him to rule and reign in our stead. These worshipers realized any such effort to rule their own lives is folly. And we, too, need to understand we are terrible gods and terrible kings and queens, and we need to now ask Jesus to reign in our lives today. The third thing we see in this passage is we see we worship the God who judges rightly. We worship the God who judges rightly. David understood this in Psalm 51 after he was confronted with his sin with Bathsheba and killing Uriah the Hittite. David understood what it meant to repent and he understood who God was and that God never judges wrongly. He says in Psalm 51, Be gracious to me, O God, according to your faithful love, according to your abundant compassion. Blot out my rebellion, completely wash away my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin, for I am conscious of my rebellion, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, I have sinned and done this evil in your sight. So you are right. You are right when you pass sentence. You are blameless when you judge. Friends, there is no judge like Christ because he knows not only our actions, but he knows the thoughts and intentions even of our hearts. And he knows and judges correctly. Because our king is perfect in his judgments, the worshipers in this heaven scene in Revelation 11, worship him because he judges correctly, and it says, the dead. And they say that it's now the time for him to judge the dead. The dead here are placed in juxtaposition to the saints who will receive a reward. We'll talk about that in just a moment when we close. But we see here that this indicates that the dead that it's mentioning are the opposite of saint. It's the wicked. We understand that God is perfect in his judgments, and there will come a time when he will judge the dead, the lost, the ones apart from Christ, the ones far from Christ, the ones living their lives in wickedness and for their own glory and for their own honor and according to their own ways. Those who have hitched their wagon to this world and remain remained in their wicked state, never receiving the grace of our gracious King. And when that time comes, as it says here, the time is now to judge the dead. When that time comes, it will be too late. It will be too late. You see, while we have breath, while we live on this earth, while these warnings yet have to come fully to fruition, we have the opportunity to trust in the Lord Jesus and to give our lives over to him. We worship a king who knows the thoughts and intentions of our hearts, and he knows our hearts, and he knows that they're lost, and he has offered and extended mercy and grace to anyone who believes, to anyone who will receive him. But in this day, in this moment, when this takes place once and for all, it will be too late. Who do you, who of you here today needs to be made alive in Christ and no longer be 
the dead, but to be made alive in Christ. Who today needs to trust in the grace and the mercy that is extended to each and every one of us from the Lord Jesus Christ because he died on the cross to save you, to give you an opportunity to live with him in eternity forever, to be a worshiper of him, understanding and worshiping him like these people do in this passage. Who in here needs to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins today so that they could be made alive in him? Friends, don't delay in responding to his grace. Don't delay in responding to his mercy because there will come a day when one day it is too late. Who do you know? Who, who in your life do you burden of? Who, who are you praying for, for their salvation, that they would come to understand the gospel and understand the, the beauty of the, the death of, the, of Christ and the cross of Christ, so that they too could believe and understand and be made from dead to alive? Who do you know? It could be too late eventually it will be too late eventually don't delay in asking them to come to be reconciled to christ give them the opportunity you don't have to go to the uh, you don't have to go to them and beat down their doors and force them that's not going to work but can we hold before them the grace and the mercy of jesus christ as often as we possibly can so that they will too trust in him and be made alive And then how can we, each and every one of us, be sure that we are not too hitching our wagon to this world, a world that will disappoint, a world that will fade, a world that will fall away and lead us astray if we are not careful. And I pray that we would rather place our faith and trust in the kingdom of Christ, trusting him, and we do that because there is reward. And that's our final point today. That we worship the Savior who rewards the faithful. I want to share some fantastic news with you as we get ready to close. There is a reward awaiting those who have trusted in Jesus Christ and have received his glorious gift of salvation. The Bible tells us that we are joint heirs with him. We are adopted into his family, and whatever has been given to him is also available to you and I. Uh, Paul describes it as the riches in Christ, that we are even seated in the heavenly places in this moment. We're seated, seated there because Christ is seated there, and wherever Christ is, we are. And according to the grace of Christ, no merit on your own or, or, your, or on my own part has afforded that for us. It's simply that we've trusted, that we've been loved and adopted into his family, and because whatever we uh, has been given to him, because we are adopted, is available to you and me. We have reward and the worshipers say that Jesus, uh, it's time for him to judge the dead, but it's time for him to reward the saints. It's time for him to award, reward those who've trusted in him. And so, those riches are available to you and I. I want to pray, and we're going to sing, and we're going to, tr- we're going to, I, I, I'm, I want us to think and respond and to acknowledge because we have that opportunity, as we've already talked about, of joining the roar of heaven, even today, to say our God is faithful, our God is amazing and worthy of our praise, and our God will overcome on my behalf. Let's pray, and if God is moving in your life, would you respond to him today in worship? Lord, we love you. We praise you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We know that what you have done, you have done for your glory, but you've done it so that we can know you, so that we can be worshipers of yours as well, Lord. And we know that you still tarry. These things haven't fully come to fruition yet because you still are coming. You still are establishing your kingdom. You still are adding people to it every day. 
And so, God, may we worship you. As Revelation 4 tells us, that one day we will gather around the throne, we'll sing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We get to do that in this moment. We get to join the roar of heaven singing the very same words in this moment. To sing the very words of Revelation chapter 4 in this song that we're about to sing, Lord. And I pray as we sing, you would be pleased and that we would acknowledge and understand that we are joining in with the throngs of heaven singing as well. We worship you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand? We're going to sing this song of how our Savior is worthy of all our praise. Would you sing it with us and with heaven as well? Let's sing together. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Lift this up together. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. of lightning rolls of thunder blessing and honor strength and glory and power be to you the only wise king holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come with all creation I sing praise to the king of kings you are my everything and I will adore you Awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything. You be seated for just a moment, and I want to introduce you to Beth Kelly. Can I get a mic? Thank 
you. Beth is coming, and she uh, feels led to join here and be a member here, and we're so thankful. I was able to meet and talk with her last week, and uh, she has some friends here, and I just want to say for just a moment, she came because she was invited. You know what? 81% of people will come to church if you'll invite them. Do you know that? That's the statistics. I'm not lying. Someone smarter than me figured that out. And, uh, and I'm so thankful that uh, Beth was invited because God is working in her life. And she actually wants to share a word of testimony with you about how God is working in your life. So, Beth, would you share with us? Um, if I can without crying, uh, I would like to say that I was saved when I was a child and baptized in Baptist church and went to church all my life. And um, I got a little far away, but Jesus didn't give up on me. Amen. He kept knocking at my heart and knocking at my heart. And he brought, he saved me and brought me back. And now I'm just trying to serve him and do what he says, which is love one another. All right. Hey, man, isn't that awesome? Would you praise God? for how praise he's working. Jesus. Yes, praise Jesus for his work in Beth's life and in the life of our church. Would you come afterwards and just let her know you're so excited how God is working in her life and invite her right into our, our family. Let her know you're glad she's here in just a moment. And uh, I'm going to stand with you. Jason's got a couple things to instruct us on. You'll stand right here right. and folks will come by and let you know they're thankful. Yeah, that'll be fine. No worries. If it <laughs> unplugs, that's all right. So, um, Jason, if you'll close us out. Yes, so two things that we want to make you aware of before you leave. Number one, uh, as Derek mentioned, we do still have T-shirts for sale. Uh, for those of you who thought maybe you wanted to take advantage of the deal we were running last week, where you can get one for 15 or two for 30, we're running that deal again this week, okay? So jump back there and grab, grab you a shirt. We would love to see those shirts out all around the community. Secondly, tomorrow night is a huge night for us here at this church. We have our trunk or treat right out here in the parking lot at 5.30, from 5.30 to 7 in conjunction with Scare on the Square. Um, so if you have not uh, signed up to do a trunk yet and all of a sudden you feel the Lord moving, it's not too late. You can still come and bring your car and set up a trunk. And we will provide the candy for you uh, to hand out to kids and, and people in our community. So come and be a part of that. Whether you bring your car and decorate a trunk or not, come and be a part of what's going on here from 5 30 to 7 tomorrow evening and then finally let's all stand to our feet and as you do i want to remind you that worship is not over we are not finishing worship when we walk out of this room we're continuing to worship we live a life of worship as followers of christ and on your way out i would encourage you to worship through giving you can do that in the room here there's boxes in the back or you can text any dollar amount to the number 84321 and give that way uh, if you're watching us online you can go to our website lafayettefirst.life slash give and give that way but i would encourage you to continue to worship as you leave this room don't think it's over it's just beginning we're going out into the world so let me pray for us uh, and then you'll be sent out into the world. God, thank you for how you love us. Thank you for how you call us together uh, and have our lives cross over each other in such beautiful ways, God, that we can serve you together. Thank you for that. Thank you that we have a Savior who overcomes and a Savior who loves us and um, that we don't have to live without hope, but we know what's going to happen in the end. Thank you for that, Lord. Father, I pray that you would now empower us to go and share that same message with the world around us. Go with us, Holy Spirit, as we leave this place that we might be witnesses for you today. God, we love you. Praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You are sent out into the world.